Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. The section on bands and privileges is divided into a few kind of disparate sections. There's one on frequency privileges, one on emission privileges, power limits, primary secondary allocations, and repeater coordination. A little bit disparate. Uh, what I want to talk about first is frequency privileges for the technician and you're going to see this chart uh, quite a bit in your ham life. Uh, this is published several times a year in QST. You can get it also as a PDF off of the American Radio Relay League website. This has all the US amateur radio bands. Uh, the bands actually changed fairly recently. Two new ones were added. Uh, 2200 meters and 630 meters kind of experimental uh, sort of bands available to uh, extra uh, advanced and general. The bands that we're interested in for uh, technician divide into two parts. First of all everything on this side of the page right here that right there are your fundamental allocations. Uh, 10 meters a little bit now if you go six meters and above, six meters and above here, you've got full privileges on all bands uh, and you can go up to uh, 1500 watts PEP on any of these. Now 10 meters and below you are limited to 200 watts. So HF 10 meters, you have privileges on 10 meters on um, 15, 40, and 80. And here's what they look like. You look up kind of close at them. The privileges that you have are this sort of hatched white, uh, which in the key over here is CW only. Okay. Um, then on 40 meters, which is a great all round band, you have almost all the entire CW segment that you can operate on except the first 25 kilohertz which belong to the uh, amateur extra. So your privileges on 40 meters uh, for CW are the same as um, the advanced and uh, general. Okay and, and then down here on 15 meters you've got some privileges too. If you want to try CW on HF you get yourself a little QRP rig or something like that and a 40 meter antenna 40 meters is the place to be for uh, CW these days and you know hey QRP transceivers don't cost very much doesn't cost much to put together a dipole go ahead and give it a try now let's look at the privileges we have on six meters two meters there's a very small segment of each band that's set aside for CW only okay th these are what are called weak signal modes uh, generally your FM will be up here there is FM on six meters two meters is the workhorse band of the technician the next workhorse band is 70 centimeters okay that's also a workhorse band now there's a band in between 220 megahertz uh, 1.25 meters that there's still three megahertz of space there Finally, we're starting to see some people make equipment for this band again. Uh, two megahertz was taken away. Now this section right here, 219 to 220, uh, the technician uh, can use that, but only for fixed digital message forwarding systems only. Seems kind of arbitrary, but that's the way they are. Now some of these bands that are in the gray areas down here, which happens to include the 70 centimeter band, we actually share with other services and amateur radio operation on these bands is usually secondary. Now the primary services don't use them very much, so that means we get fairly full usage of them. Um, 
but there are military radars and things like that that we'll find in there and we're not allowed to interfere with them so if we find ourselves on top of one of those we need to move okay and one other thing I'm going to mention about the 70 centimeter band is that there is a geographic restriction on the 420 through 430 that if you're within a certain number of miles of the Canadian border you cannot use those frequencies um, and it, it doesn't matter because most of the stuff on 70 centimeters is up higher in the band so that gives you a nice little picture of the band privileges the next thing it talks about is uh, emission privileges now emission is referring to the type of modulation that you are using there's some very exotic uh, mechanisms for designating modulation types none of them show up on the test don't worry about them FM's the big one that you'll use or if you want CW why not um, a beacon uh, is defined in here as a station that puts out um, a signal over and over again so people can kind of tell if a band is open um, if the band is uh, open then you'll hear the beacon you will know it's open to that area and so on these are on HF and uh, VHF and UHF now one of the things that has sort of uh, changed the definition of a beacon you've got the old-fashioned beacons which are just that they're radio signals that uh, are around the world that people can use to kind of determine if they um, if the band is open to that part but then there's also the reverse beacon network where instead of transmitters at these weird places they've got receivers at these weird places and there's something called the reverse beacon network where you put out a signal and you can look on the internet and it will tell you where you were heard and then there's something called whisper the weak signal propagation reporter which is actually also a beaconing mode and you can act as either a transmitter or a receiver and uh, all this data is gathered together by something called PSK reporter and it will put out and give you a very nice map of where your signal is being heard that's mostly used on HF but there is some use uh, for it on some of the other bands now uh, the amateur emission types that you see in the table here are common uh, CW we know data we know image or things like slow scan television and so on also fast scan television um, and a lot of people are putting HD TV on 440 um, MCW is modulated CW that's CW over FM phone is you know AM and FM and upper and lower sideband pulse is uh, uh, the the shape of the pulse is modulated to put information on it normally you would think of that as a data mode ready we know is radio teletype slow this uh, SS spreads Spectrum Communications is an exotic form of radio that you are entitled to use. Uh, you have to be above 220 uh, me uh, megahertz to use it, but it's very, very, very interesting. Uh, test is another uh, emission mode that is just a signal with no information on it. Now, I already talked a little bit about the power limits uh, to your signal. Uh, on 6 meters and above, you've got 1,500 watts PEP, which is a whale of a lot of power. Unless you're working moon bounce or something like that, there's very little chance that you'll be using anywhere near that power. Uh, 25 watts to 50 watts or so is plenty on these bands for uh, FM below 6 meters that means 10 meters uh, you've got privileges on 10 meters 15 meters 40 meters and 80 meters on those bands 200 watts peak envelope power okay which is a well of a lot for CW actually um, I don't normally recommend QRP for new hams but a QRP HF CW radio will actually net you quite a few contacts and that's something you can think about I mean you do your FM work you do that but 
you know, get together with a friend and both of you throw up a 40 meter dipole in your yard and you call each other up and say, okay, I'm going to get in this frequency and try CW. And you, you try your CW back and forth and who knows, in a few months you'll be very, very uh, proficient at it. I talked about primary and secondary allocations. If you're secondary and you're interfering, get off. Um, and then the last one talks about repeater coordination. Who selects a frequency coordinator? Um, and you can go to the National uh, Frequency Coordinators Council webpage and find out who the frequency coordinator is for your area. And believe me, there is one. Um, back east where the population density is much higher than here in Colorado, frequency coordination can be a full-time and controversial job because there are more people wanting to put up repeaters than there are repeater pairs available. A repeater pair is an input and an output frequency. And lots of things have to go into coordinating repeaters so that they don't interfere with each other. And it gets very complicated, the process of coordinating repeaters. Um, it is possible to put up an uncoordinated repeater, but you're looking for trouble. You really are. You're looking for trouble. Um, I know a ham who got into trouble uh, for operating an uh, uncoordinated repeater many, many years ago. Don't do that. Um, and that uh, it covers the section that we've got here. Our next section will be on international rules, and then we'll be about done with rules. And I'm sure you'd like to be done with rules and then get on the air. So um, we'll uh, pick that up next time. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.